This was originally going to be a nice short little video about configuring the Apple Graphite Extreme base station uh, that you see in the corner right there. Unfortunately, uh, this turned out to be a much larger project than I originally had anticipated. Um, I don't own a single Ethernet crossover cable, apparently. So, what the result that you may or may not see in front of you, let's see, I'll move the camera in closer here, is as you can see, we're in our configuration airport admin utility for graphite and snow, uh, and that's the base station being recognized right there. That is all thanks to this little device right over here. This is a Linksys cable DSL router with four port switch that I picked up at Goodwill for about $3. There's even the little note left on it there from uh, 2010 or so. I don't know if you can make that out. This is, um, what you see in front of you, the computer, is an iMac G4. Uh, it's a 700 megahertz PowerPC G4 processor single core. Uh, it's got an uh, airport adapter in it. It's uh, got 512 megabytes of RAM and a 40 gig hard drive. Now, the whole point of this video is this little device right here. This is an Apple Airport uh, graphite base station. One of the very first that Apple came out with came out around 1999-2000 when the um, when the Apple iBook clamshells were coming out. The really colorful clamshell looking iBooks, if you've ever seen those. Uh, that This is the Wi-Fi solution that launched back then so that you could have wireless in your home, which was really a new concept at the time in the late 90s, early 2000s, wireless networking. It runs in the 802.11b um, Standards, so it has a maximum download transfer rate of 11 megabits per second. And I bet you're wondering why the hell would I bother configuring this ancient piece of hardware. Well, this is actually going to become, believe it or not, in this day and age, this is actually going to become part of Wi-Fi network that I'm going to set up uh, elsewhere. So, the thing is, is that 11 megabits per second seems incredibly slow. But I bet a lot of people out there don't even have 11 megs down if you're watching this video. Or you might have something like 15 or 20. 11 megabits down is uh, actually still quite a bit this day and age. And it's kind of sad that we have to say that, but our internet standards have not risen very far in the past uh, 10 years or so. And uh, the Wi-Fi network that this is going to go into has a download speed of about 4 megabits per second. So there will more than likely be no lost data there, no lost speed, so to speak. So, the biggest deal here is this here um, configuration utility that I've got set up on my iMac G4. By the way, if you're really interested in this computer, I'm going to have a cell separate video on a tour of this computer. Uh, this computer I've had for a long time, probably had it for six years now or so. So, um, I'm going to do a full tour video on the iMac G4. We're going to go through the specifications, what it can do this day and age, and everything else. But the reason I broke this thing out is because you need something called the uh, Airport Admin Utility for Graphite and Snow. As you can see up in the top corner of your screen, I'm going to try to center this best I can. There we go. It looks pretty good. And uh, this will not run on any Mac OS X base um, operating system higher than 10.5 Leopard. And I have 10.6, I have 10.4, and I believe I have 10.0 and OS 9 lying around in various machines. I have nothing running Leopard, and unfortunately Snow Leopard and Intel Max can no longer run this particular utility. But I did manage to get it working, as you can see right here. And I'm going to go into Configure, and we're going to go ahead and hit Automatic. And we'll go ahead and see if I can get this thing to work. Writing base station configuration. That's a good sign, I hope. The little light is blinking on it, which you can't see, but trust me, it is. I did attempt a hard reset before this um, came out, so hopefully this will configure properly and everything should be good. I hope this video doesn't come out too long. It's supposed to just be kind of like a tidbit sort of thing. I can't imagine people find this terribly interesting, but uh, we'll see. Alright, it appears the device has restarted base station. Okay. 
labeled base station. It's got a 192.168 thing. Let's see if I can configure this now and see if I can't set up something like a password on it and that sort of thing. Getting the infamous spinning wheel of death here. Usually means it's doing something though. Um, hopefully. Man, Wi-Fi configurations were slow back in the day. Turns out, there, Apple has released many, many base stations over the years. This, it went from the Graphite to the Snow Dual Ethernet, and then it went up to the Airport Extreme base stations, and then it went up further there, so now we have like these little square... An error occurred while reading the configuration. What does that mean? Alright, here we go. This is what I was looking for. Uh, I, all I did was restart the base station, uh, reset it, and then uh, enter an IP and name through manual mode instead of the auto configuration mode. I have a feeling that it was trying to auto configure it based on the fact that it thought it had connection to the internet, which it doesn't, sitting over here on this desk. So um, now I'm just going to kind of go in and see how this, how this works. I've never been in here before. Look, I don't know if, yeah, it looks like you can see it. You can connect using America Online. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty old. There's some stuff in here that I don't fully understand. There's a button here that says default. I kind of do want that. Apparently it uploads software to the base station from this configuration, which is a little strange. All right, oops, all right, let's go back into configuration here. So let's see, we can call it base station. I don't really care about that. That's usually pretty easy to find. Um, now, wireless security is not enabled. Only supports WP, only supports 40-bit. I could have sworn WP went up to 64-bit. I don't really care if you manage by the number of characters to guess this um, local area network password, but if you manage to, all the power to you. Station density. I don't know what a lot of this means. All right, well, it seems like we have this uh, configured to at least connect to the internet, theoretically, depending on, I had no idea what I was looking at there. Um, I'm gonna go plug this into my modem and see if it broadcasts a Wi-Fi network. I'm not gonna show you that because it's just gonna be looking into the corner of a bunch of crap. So, uh, I'll be right back and we'll see if we have this configured correctly. All right, I just wanted to give one kind of final last update here. Um, we are connected to the Apple network, as you can see right there. And if we pop over into Camino here, uh, we can go to a website, say uh, Google. And uh, we do have internet. So that's a good thing. Uh, everything seems to be working all right. There's uh no major problems that I ran into. The only issue I really had that I'd say screwed me up for about the last 30 minutes or so was I could get the um, G4 here to connect just fine. 
as you can see, we're connected wirelessly and everything. Uh, but I couldn't get any other device in the house to connect any of the newer stuff, the phones and the uh, laptops and that sort of thing. And at first I wasn't sure if there was some sort of compatibility issue with the uh, uh, Wi-Fi um, band or anything like that. If it didn't want to run on 8 to 11 b or whatever. Because I know sometimes some newer devices only go back to G instead of B wireless. Turns out, the uh, problem is that you have to actually, if it's not running the Apple Airport base software like the G4 is, you have to enter your wireless password in hex code, the hexadecimal equivalent to what you entered for your base station Wi-Fi password. Makes sense, I guess, because uh, WEP, Web Encrypted Password, does run in hexadecimal, but you actually have to uh, change it into hex decimal code and then enter whatever that hex code is to connect to it. So thankfully there's actually a button just in the space station software that tells you what that is and uh, once you hit that it tells you how to connect to it but that was a learning experience. Uh, it seems that networking back in the day was just a hell of a lot more complicated than we have it now and uh, we should definitely be thankful for the advancements that we've made in the last, uh, god, almost 20 years now, 99, 2019. Yeah, about three years that'll have been 20 years. And, uh, yeah, so I'd say this ends in success. This little base station will go on to, uh, live its life in another Wi-Fi network and, uh, continue being useful. And when I could have probably gone out and just bought a new wireless, uh, router for about $20, but, hey, why bother, right? All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little kind of one-off tutorial video thing. I've got a lot of editing to do to kind of splice this into some sort of watchable format. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.